I want to talk to you today about rolling without slipping. This is a super special type of circular motion. You see, there are two general classes of motion. Here's a circle and there's translation. And we've spent a great deal of time talking about translation so far. So translation would be the center of the mass is moving. And then of course, there's also rotation. We've just started talking about rotation. So I guess <clears throat> a positive rotation would look like this. The center of mass is at rest, yet there's spinning happening. I could draw both of those and draw you some velocity vectors. So there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's translation, and translation looks like this. This top of the wheel or tape or whatever is moving at some velocity. The center or the axle, if it were a traditional bike or car wheel, the center would be moving at the same velocity and the bottom is also moving at the same velocity. Now translation is rolling with slipping or maybe it's not even rolling, it's you slam on the brakes and the car skids as you continue to translate the car. There's also the idea of just rotation and just rotation well, we can think of an example for the car with just rotation also. If we make the car wheel turn this direction, we might have a velocity there. We can even call it a tangential velocity, right? And um, if the, uh, well, if it's just rotation and not translation, then the axle will be at rest. So if the top is moving this way, this is kind of an obvious question, then the bottom must be moving that way. So I'm not even going to ask it. Uh, you don't get a question. There would be VT also. But rolling without slipping is a combination of translation and rotation. So what we'll get if we add up all these vectors, let's say, consider the possibility that we can make the speed of the axle, the translation part, exactly equal to the tangential speed. This will be a very interesting thing. I'm not going to draw it yet, but I want you to think about what that would look like if we added all those vectors up. So I will actually show you rolling without slipping. Here I have the roll of tape and I'm going to start it at zero and I would like to roll it without slipping. Notice that the bottom is stuck to the ruler. I'm going to translate it all the way around. Can you tell me if I draw a little tick mark here and a little tick mark, get off there, a little tick mark right there, can you tell me how far the wheel has gone? Well, it rolled all the way around, right? And so if we draw the wheel like this, let's just draw it over here. If we draw the wheel like this, then we can identify its radius. And if it rolled this far, then we argue that it probably has rolled what? Its circumference, I guess. So this distance is two pi times the radius of the circle if it rolled from here to here. So if we wanted to calculate its speed, now this would be an interesting challenge. We could figure out how fast it's going by saying its velocity is equal, to, well, I mean, it's simply displacement over time, right? So let's get ourselves some numbers here. The speed of the axle, and I'm actually gonna label this as axle speed. If I label that as axle speed, I'm gonna say the speed of the axle is equal to <clears throat> how far it's gone, which is two pi r divided by how long it took. Now something's rotating, and if something's rotating, and it rotates a full revolution, what is that time? Can you tell me? You know that time? What is the name for the time it takes for something to do a full rotation? 
It is the period, and I'll use a capital T for that. This is interesting. Check this out. 2 pi r divided by t. What if I rewrite this as r times 2 pi over period? I hope you're starting to recognize this thing in parentheses as omega. So we're going to find that the speed of the axle is r times omega. That's interesting, but maybe not yet awesome. I want you to take this. Let's say we happen to have a translating thing that's translating at the same rate as it's rotating. So I put little T's on here and I'm going to add this to this sucker right here and draw what will result. Check this out. On the, uh, on the, on the top, we've got tangential speed of the top from translation, tangential speed of the top from rotation. So at the top, we've actually got twice the tangential speed. That's two times VT. For the center, we've got tangential speed from the translation and no speed at all from the rotation. So we have simply VT on the axle. And on the bottom, well, we've got tangential speed that way from translation and tangential speed that way from rotation. And in fact, the bottom is at rest. If the bottom's at rest, then it looks like this. Let's go through this one more time. Watch this sucker move. Notice that the bottom is always still. I'm gonna put my ruler back. It makes it a lot easier to do this. The bottom is always still. It's always in contact with the ruler, unless I slip. This is supposed to be rolling without slipping. The bottom is in contact with the ruler at all times, and so it is, in fact, at rest. This is very hard to accept. When you look at a car tire, the car tire, if it is truly driving, rolling without slipping, I'll call it, well, let's just call it rolling without slipping. If it's rolling without slipping, then the car tire is stopped at the bottom. The bottom being at rest is a critical element of something that's rolling without slipping. So we're gonna make a funny little circle right here and I'm gonna try to figure out how fast Wait a second. This equation here says the velocity of the axle is r times omega. That's the radius of the wheel times the angular velocity at which it's spinning. And guess what r times omega is? r times omega, we know that to be tangential velocity. This is from the immediately previous video. So that says the axle velocity must be the tangential speed of spinning. That's the same statement that's present right here. Look at this. Oh, purple, purple. Tangential speed. What if we translate at the same rate at which the top would be moving if we were simply rotating? I'm going to say that one more time. What if the tangential speed of rotation were the same as the axle speed of translation? In that case, we would get this picture right here of rolling without slipping. Rolling without slipping is an awesome special case and you're going to see it all the time in physics. Goodbye.